It is not the will to win that matters, but it is the will to prepare to win that counts. And this is exactly what government is seeking to embed in the youths through the formation of several sports academies across the country. With the sporting world expanding and becoming a more lucrative international business, and with countries toting several sporting academies themselves, Guyana is stepping out on the right foot to catch up with the rest of the globe. Internationally, sports academies are designed to improve the way men and women, and in most cases boys and girls, approach human performance. These institutions create an environment that educates, activates, and provides an opportunity for humans to unlock their full potential. Guyana's Sports Academy will be no different. In late October, at the main academy's launch, Prime Minister Brigadier retired Mark Phillips revealed that significant emphasis is being placed on developing 12 academies to focus on the core sports here in Guyana. As held as a main priority, the creation of more opportunities for culture, youth and sport activities because of the critical role these assets play in our lives. Discussing these critical areas are important elements of our sports sector and will aid us in finding ways to further contribute to social development in sport. These academies, which are being facilitated by the National Sports Commission and the relevant sports associations, unions and federations, will have a three-prong effect. Firstly, the grassroots or nursery level is aiming to teach new players about the sport and ultimately develop the different fundamental aspects. The second pillar will focus on specifically organized tournaments for each sporting discipline, for players to compete at the highest local level. The final and most significant pillar is the elite academy that will be implemented after the conclusion of the tournament stage. This pillar will identify the above average performing athletes and place them in what will be called a training camp for a period of four to eight weeks. This will open the door for international exposure and possible scholarships to be awarded to these players. Since the launching of this initiative, six of the 12 core sports have commenced regular training sessions. DBI took its cameras to some of the practice sessions to catch up with what is happening in these academies. We first spoke with the administrators of the different academies to hear about the progress the initiatives have made over the last few months. Like any other sport that needs continuity, we need the youths to come out and we need to have them informed so when they reach that, that age where they can join the senior team or to the elite level, they already have that background in rugby. Rugby is a sport where it teaches you discipline and most of all integrity and respect. So, I mean, that is what I see sometimes is lacking in the youth of today. So, this is another way where the youth can come and, you know, have something else to do rather than being on the streets or looking for trouble. So, them coming into this academy will also help them to be a part of that structure. Um, and most times, we once, once they're good enough, we can also offer um, small scholarships for them to be able to go abroad. It's been very, it's been heartwarming to say the least. The kids coming out and playing and, you know, just, you know, enjoying the game of badminton. The trainees, they've, they've done well. They've shown great um, natural, I guess, ability towards the sport. They can hit the shuttle, they can serve. So because of that, we just want to uh, make sure they get all the technique when it comes to do those, those two things properly, and then we could continue along our plan that we've been given. 
for the many years that I've played, we have good numbers to badminton, but when it comes to um, the youth and them transitioning to guest professional, we haven't seen much players. They have many national athletes, but you know, because the sport isn't, I guess, doesn't help them in a way, I guess, monetary or I guess, studying or whatever, they kind of just fade out. You know, they start working or something. But so I think with this sports academy, I guess it pushes um, the youth to better more. Um, take badminton more seriously in terms of their future and what it can do for them. First and foremost, we'd like to thank the government for the initiative, bringing academy to not just squash, but many other sports in the country. I think academies have a great role to play in enhancing the players, enhancing the sport in general and doing what sport does for countries. When we compare ourselves to other countries, like when I compare ourselves to, to other Latin American countries, they live on squash courts, they, they revolve their whole school, home life, everything around being on a squash court. So giving a place for these juniors to call their own, to say that this is where they're going to harness their trade and, and contribute to the successes of Guyana squash and whole, I believe that psychologically increases the commitment factor of a player. Like, it's one thing to just know like, oh, I'm gonna go to, to another club and just put in my hours. This is now built for you. This, this was designed for your success in mind. Down to their bones, I, I think, Initiatives like this is what's going to progress, not only them as players, but Ghana squash and whole. With the same excitement touted by the organizers and trainers of these sporting academies, parents and participating youngsters are also eager to take their skills to the next level. Well, I think it's the beginning of something great uh, for children in the whole, uh, Guyanese children. It's not only an opportunity for them to be in a, a very reputable sport, but it's also a way to keep them disciplined and fit. I think this is a good move by the PPP government uh, for the children of Guyana. It's actually very nice. I see Guyana improving all sports uh, steadily by steadily. This is my first time playing rugby, actually. Um, I do see a lot of talented youths out here, so I hope that Guyana can take it to the next level and improve their performance internationally more than, uh, more than its current performance, which is actually pretty decent already. From my experience in the past, Ghana has been a bit disorganized, uh, so to speak, especially in our training methods. Um, uh, with team sports, we don't often train together, we don't often have one coach or anything, so centralizing it like this so that all the national players can come have a good team session and go out to perform internationally, first and foremost improves chemistry and then improve. It makes a bond amongst the players, which is good for any sport. Uh, anywhere. It encourages other sports to sort of centralize and encourage the development of these sports in schools. So it, prepares, so it allows us to have more athletes for on a national stage. Well, it's a really good initiative for the development of squash because squash is not really a sport that is that popular in Guyana. So through the academy, we can get a lot of new faces in the sport and really push it to where it needs to go. Squash has been out for a good while. It's from COVID, about two years. and. We had a very well-rounded team that nearly won Castle last time and all of it just went to waste because, you know, COVID came around and so now that I start back, all those that have been out for a good while, they're coming back now. People have never seen squash before and now are aware of it and we have very good coaches here, very experienced coaches that are ready to take on these kids and hopefully the next couple of castles that come around are ready to take them on and are ready to win. In the final leg of the academy process, Elite players will be selected for a training camp to prepare them for upcoming international exposure and, ultimately, to put Guyana on the map. For DPI, I am Shukwan Gill.